Hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. Please invite your friends, and let us have some great time together. You know, uh, the rights of women is very important in society because having women given their rights will give a healthy uh, society. Remember, the mother is she is the first school a child he learn from, which mean a healthy woman mean a healthy child. A healthy child is a healthy person in the society, regardless if it's a child, is a kid, as a boy or a girl. There's thousands of articles written in the internet speaking about Islam giving women their rights. I mean, endless. I just search and I click at one of them. It is hilarious. Women rights in Islam. This is how Islam led the world with women rights. Imagine Islam led the world with women rights. Those are articles written by Muslims. Women in Islam, Islamic society, etc. Five things you need to know about women in Islam. I'm interested in reading. The title is really interesting. Islam and women rights overcoming inequality. Amazing. Women and Islam, Oxford Islamic study. Do women have the right to vote? Muslim talking about vote women, she is half a brain in Islam, what since when? So let us uh, examine, you know, uh, what how truthful those things is. Uh, I am interested now, actually, I never click at this, I don't remember I click at this link before. Five things you need to know about women in Islam. Let me check it out, give me a second. To be sure that we can open this website and it's safe. You know, there is the website of Al-Aqsa University, which is run by Hamas. Uh, they found out that they are hacking people who visit their site. Imagine. Anyway, so let us click at it. All right. Look like it's fine. Five things you need to know about women in Islam. I remember... Um, We need to read what Muslim is saying, not uh, somebody else. You know what I mean? Okay, I don't sound, it doesn't sound like for me as inter I mean, Islamic. Is it Islamic website really? Five and known misunderstood. Yeah, it's not look like it. Uh huh. Okay. In, wrong interpretation of the Quran. You know, people they have wrong interpretation of the Quran. The foundation of Islamic law and addition, Sunnah, etc. According to Dr. According to Dr. Aziza, let us go out of here. Dr. Aziza. Yeah, not according to Islam, according to Dr. Aziza. Let us see the from one. Uh, this is how Islam led word with women rights. Okay, let us see. Uh, Rayana Khalaf. Okay. Let us see. Oh, Islam read. Women in the seven centuries of Arabia had right not to extend, extended to most women in the West. Okay. Until recent over 1,000 years. Okay. Women in the pre-Islamic uh, uh, Arabia uh, were reportedly buried from basic human and civil right. Here you see that lie. You know, don't Muslims, they say that Muhammad, he used to work for Khadija. Is it this is the first job? <laughs> do you see how they lie? They are buried, you know, they cannot do anything. They are they are banned. They cannot do any human right. If you read my book, by the way, my book Six and Allah in Indonesian language, volume number one is already out. I just put the link. All right. So if you like to have the link, it's already published on my page in Patreon. It's for free for those who speak Indonesian. All right, and in this book you will see that women before Islam they can have multi husbands, the Arab women, which means it's the opposite. Before Islam, the women she can have two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine husbands. Doesn't matter how many. 
and then when she have a child, she is the one who choose who is the father. Khadija herself, she have two husbands before Muhammad. Khadija, she was a rich woman who Muhammad wore for her. So how they say women before Islam, they were buried? Isn't it the Quran speak about a queen where Solomon, he went all the way to Yemen to meet the queen of Yemen? I mean, do you see how they lie? Women before Islam, they, 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 they are rulers. When, uh, when the daughter of uh, the king of Iran, she took over the throne of her father. What Muhammad he says? Let us find the hadith in English. I mean, unbelievable how they lie. Here we go. The prophet S.A.W. said, a people who make a woman their ruler will never be successful. And this is Sahih. Do you see it? Do you see it, my friend? You, you, know, you know, you people, you want to get everything for free, even the English one for free? I mean, you don't want to support us? We are giving free books for those who don't speak. I mean, don't speak English, and they are from poor country. I mean, look how greedy people are. They don't want to support us. They want everything for free. We are giving books to the Albanian. They are poor nation, and, you know, Indonesian, etc. But people, they are so greedy, you know. They don't care really. Or do you think I, I pay for my gas from the sky? You know, like I, I, I get. Uh, what's wrong with people? They want to get everything for free. <laughs> How many languages I know I get for free? Russian, Albanian, uh, Croatian, Bor you know, Bosnia, uh, Indonesian. Uh, somebody remind me, uh, Polish, uh, which means Poland language. Uh, I mean, many, many languages, and still people want things for free. Yeah. They want to go to heaven for free. You know, Jesus died for us for free. No, he did not give it for free. He, he paid his blood for you. They want everything in life for free. And at the end of the day, they will complain, trust me. During the battle of Al Jamal, Allah the benef benefited, uh, 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 benefited me with the word I heard from the Prophet. When the Prophet heard the news that the people of Persia had made the daughter of uh, uh, Kisra, uh, the Caesar of or the king of the Persian, their queen, their ruler, he said, Never will he succeed. Such a nation as mates makes a woman their ruler. This is the opinion of Muhammad. And this is in the seventh century. While Muhammad, he start subjugating the women to go under the feet of the men, a woman, she was named as a queen in Persia. Look at Persia now. <laughs> so do you see how they lie to you in those articles? That women before Islam, they used to be nothing. Women before Islam, they, and, and there is a verse in the Quran that says they used to bury women, and we will go for that one too, to show you how they lie too, about burying women. If ever they bury his daughter, so where is the, where is the, where is people coming from? <laughs> so, Muhammad, he believe that a woman, excuse my language, is a stupid creature. And because she is, according to Muhammad, if she rule a society, the society will be destroyed. Do you understand? Why they will never succeed if they have a leader, she is a woman? What will happen exactly? 
because simply she is, according to Muhammad, stupid. If you go to different hadith in the Muhammad he mentioned, just to explain to you how Muhammad he think about women. Muhammad he said clearly in Arabic words, naqisat wa aqlin wa deen. Naqisat wa aqlin, the word naqis mean minus. Minus. Aql mean a brain. And this is the word in the front of you in Arabic. Naqisat wa aqlin wa deen. They have a minus brain and minus religion. This is Muhammad's view of women. They have deficiency, and actually even the Muslim translation, which is trying to hide the stupidity of Muhammad, saying that women, they have deficiency in their brain, and they have deficiency in their, in the, in their belief, in their religion. So when a woman, she asks, Muhammad saying, what is the deficiency in our wisdom and our religion. Muhammad, the smart person, he says, oh, don't you have menstruation? <laughs> Isn't it the evidence in the Quran that you are not equal to the man in witnessing? The Quran made a rule that women, she cannot be a witness in any case except borrowing money and only, like in a few cases, like let us say, a woman, she gave birth. Hmm? because men are not allowed to enter the room so only women she can witness that this is the child belong to this woman the woman who was in the room in certain few cases women she can be witness and not only that the Quran put a condition on the women they have to be approved by men not any two women two women are equal to one in the case of anything have nothing to do with capital punishment which means you cannot bring two women witnesses for adultery because adultery in Islam is considered as a capital punishment or murder. You can't bring even a thousand women for a murder. Even a million women, you have to bring two men at least. And if you cannot have two men in the case of borrowing money, then one man at least and two women of those who you approve them. What Muhammad he want to convince us that women are meant to exist for a purpose of serving the man. They are entertainment. To serve you, cook for you, and sex. Okay. When the man became the society, and the women are not even part of the society, they are accessories. And then this religion who make the women an accessory claim that they are the one who gave women their right. If we go in the Quran, we will find this in the Quran. <clears throat> the Quran is the yellow pages of Muhammad, which is a collection of madness, fairy tale stories, and the sexual appetites for the believers. In chapter 2, verse number 282, it says clearly, if you are going to borrow money from each other, you have to make it a record in writing. And you have to bring witnesses. Bring two witnesses to witness what you wrote. And then Muhammad, he says, and if two men be not, at hand, then a man and two women. Of such as ye approve as witnesses. You see, the man doesn't matter who is he. He do not need to be approved to be a witness. He's a man. But women, 
you have to approve them because not all women they can do that very few and Muhammad in the Quran explained claiming that Allah told him so if she one of them deceived you see the translation here says earth or er she er you know this is false translation in Arabic it says tadil which means she is deceived or she is this you know she is a deceiver the other one she will remind her don't don't go there this is not true why the man he do not what about the man let us say the Muslim they will say here says oh it's me forget okay let us go with this why we do not need why why the man he do not need a supporter don't men forget to no men they are men they don't forget women forget women are stupid in Islam and this is the condition of women to be a witness in the case of borrowing money you can go right now and read other Islamic scholars or all Islamic scholars you know don't go about what I say read Islamic scholars what they say about that what is the review of the women and actually we can do right now regarding this verse this is again chapter 2 verse number 282 almost at the end of the chapter 2 Let us go here. <clears throat> and this is Tafsir al Jalalain. This is the official government website of the Kingdom of Jordan. Okay. Okay. So if two witnesses be not man, then one man and two women bear witnesses, such a witness, as you approve of the account of their pity and uh, uh, pro, pro pity, pro pity. I don't know if I'm saying the word correctly. Uh, the number of women, because of the of because of the fact that if one of the two women errs, forget. The testimony given their lesser uh, atonement and accuracy, the other one remembering will remind her uh, about like about what happened. So that one has forgotten. Okay, the reminder clause is the person for the choice of the two women that they uh, that to, is to say uh, that she may be remind of error hmm. so simply the women is the one highly possibly is going not to be fit to be a woman versus a man as a witness so in Islamic countries a woman one woman cannot be a witness if they are not practice Islamic law Do you understand? Let us say uh, you were there and you saw a man borrowing money from other man. And there is a man there next to you. Let's say you and your brother. Islam will not accept you as a witness because you are just a half witness. Why? because you have half a brain if you go and check and I advise you to go that to do that check about Muslims and capital punishment witnesses now some of you they will say well like you know some countries they approve women as a witness but those are not following Sharia law we are talking about Islam You know what I mean? Always remember that most of Muslim countries, they are Muslims, but they are not Muslims, which means 
Nobody want to follow Islam no way because Islam is just a stupid cult. It is not practical. And the Muslims, they give their, um, themselves all kind of excuse to say, uh, well, okay, there is no, like, you know, you see those uh, YouTubers who live in England or Germany or etc. And they, uh, when they take an oath, they take an oath to the, the Queen of England saying we pay allegiance for the, the Queen, okay? And they swear. But this is against Islam. Quran 551 says, take not Christian and Jews as a friends. Well, the necessity is I need the passport. And I will not get the passport unless I say this oath. So I convince myself that Islam allow me in chapter 3 verse 28 to do taqiyya, to lie. So I can say, yes, I pay allegiance for the queen, but I hate the queen. And the Muslim in Islamic countries, they practice the same. As an example, if you go to any Gulf country, uh, you will find that they have everything there is against Islam. Everything. Not a single thing they practice. Uh, uh, you know, just to remind you, music is forbidden in Islam. Music. Pictures are forbidden in Islam, which means video is forbidden too. The one who make a music or listen to music, Allah will take him will make the earth swallow him and he will make him a pig or a monkey. Name for me one Muslim who don't even play a music in the start of his video. Just one. Muhammad, he said, that time will come, my nation People among my nation will drink wine, calling it by another another name, and they play musical instrument and you know and singing girls will play for them. Allah will cause the earth to swallow them up and turn them into pigs and monkeys. Muhammad he is like consistent with pigs and monkeys things. You know he loved those things. He keep threatening people that will make you pigs and monkeys. Have you ever heard of an Islamic TV station don't play music? Have you ever heard of an Islamic TV station don't have singing girls? Hmm. So, uh, all those things in the front of us lead us to one thing, that Muslims are not Muslims. So we are talking about Islam, not about Muslims. Even those who defend Islam, they are not Muslims. I guarantee you that. If you are a person who file your tax to a government which is not an Islamic government, you are not a Muslim. If you listen to music, you are not a Muslim. If you have pictures at your home, you are not a Muslim. Allah will bring a Muslim in the judgment day and he will show him the pictures he have. And he will tell him a blow in it. I heard Messenger of Allah saying, every a printer, a, a painter, sorry, will go to hell, anyone who make pictures. And Allah will bring him to the hellfire and he will say to him, okay, for every picture you draw you know you draw or you make i will torture you in different hadith here it says the messenger of allah said whoever makes image he will be punished until to breathe and he will like allah he will order him breathe into it breathe into it make her alive make her alive which because this is how allah is supposed to he make things alive so he breathed into it so okay you made an image breathe into it so Allah will put the iPhone in front of you and he will say to you, okay, breathe into it. And actually now, right now, all our computer is nothing but images because regardless if you use, you know, Mac or window, those are images. The software is an images. It's a code for an image. So Allah, he will force you to blow when breathe into the image and he will punish you. So why Muslims, they have images all over? images of themselves, 
others, their daughters, the king, the prince, you name it. So nobody practices now. And Islam cannot be practiced, it's stupid. Going back to our topic, the women. We have to agree that women in Islam, they enjoy it very much. I mean, think about it. You are a person who is a part of a religion where the law allow you to enjoy it. The man, he can beat the women, as an example, chapter three, chapter four, verse number 34. And here the Muslim, they start making it. I mean, they go extreme in lying. Like there's a woman, her name, uh, I forgot her last name is Armstrong. She said the Quran doesn't say beat them. The Quran says, says the word daraba mean, you know, like uh, in Arabic, it says daraba, like uh, he put his tent far away. <laughs> I mean, unbelievable. <laughs> you know, sometimes I ask myself, those who they are Western and they try to defend Islam, are they coming from the moon? I mean, look, all the Muslim world understand the word Daraba as beat them and they practice it. A Western blonde woman, suddenly she is the expert in the Arabic language and she is the one who will teach you what the word means. The Muslims in Arabia, in Saudi Arabia, in Yemen, in Bahrain, in Kuwait, they don't know Arabic. But the woman who is born in Australia, she will explain to you what the word is, and she is not an Arab. Isn't it amazing how the stupidity work? And as long as we are talking about beating women, you see, when a Muslim, he tried to say to you, uh, we, you know, yes, the Quran says beat them, but it says beat them lightly. If we go in the Quran, we will not find this lightly thing. And where is where is the word lightly? Any Muslim can get me busted and show me the word lightly. This is the Arabic in the front of me. Who is the one when I show me the word lightly? Who is the one when I show me the word first and second and third, as you show in your translation? Nowhere. They will say, oh, uh, well, the prophet, he says, don't beat women until you break their bones. So beat, stop before you break their bones. That is lightly. <laughs> right? So the Quran says and explain why a man he can beat the women, he says, men are in charge of women because Allah has made one of them ex excel the other. Now, just to make it clear in Christianity, the man is in charge of the house. But in Christianity, you see when Christ he came, he changed the Jewish mentality that women this is why Jesus said to him, it says to you that the one who want to free a woman from like divorce her, give her your give her a book, which means divorce her. I say, I say, because the Jews, they were abusing women. When the woman, she is young, she is beautiful, they stay with her. When she got old, she divorced, they divorce her and get a new, brand new woman as if she is a car. So Jesus forbid such a practice. For women is an equal partner to you. You are the Lord of the house as Jesus, he is the Lord of the church and he sacrificed himself to the church, which means the man when he marry a woman, he should be willing to sacrifice himself to the church. Jesus, he made the women equal to the church. And the man, he strive to protect and to love and to serve the church. So when Jesus speak about divorce, because in Christianity there is marriage, in Islam there is no marriage. And we are going to go over that too. 
actually, if we go right now in Islamic website, you know, we showed you some website, right? Like we were here. If you go back in the search engine, women right in Islam, you know, women, etc. blah, blah, blah. Okay. How Islam confirm women rights. And this is an article written by a Muslim woman. And you will see if you go down and you read a little bit, trying to educate yourself by a woman who Islam put her down and yet she is defending Islam. You see, there is some women who they are Muslims, they defend uh, what Islam teach about women because they feel like you see it's like my identity and if i agree with this religion and i cannot get out of it when you say islam is bad that's mean i'm bad too that's how they see it so look what is what uh, what she is saying here about uh, uh, islam uh, or the marriage where does she speak about marriage let us see Uh, da, 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 da. Hmm. <laughs> women equal right in Islam begin immediately women equal rights you have no the same right for inheritance you have no they have no right to be a ruler you have no right even to learn to go to school Muhammad he said he ordered Aisha that the you know uh, Aisha she reported that the Prophet said etc that don't teach women how to read and how to write teach them how to make us you know swing you know clothing jail them in their rooms we go over that hadith too but here she says something I'm trying to find where it is about marriage in Islam okay uh... Give me a second. <clears> hmm. <throat> I'm trying to find where in the article she gave definition to marriage in Islam. All right, read with me carefully. This is how Muslim they define their marriage, not me. I'm just reading what they say. In Islam, marriage is not seen as a, a, a sacred covenant, but as a mutual beneficial contract between a man and a woman. Guys, how many Muslims they try to say to me, you are lying? This is not true. Islam is nothing but the sexual contract when it's come to marriage. This is a Muslim website explaining to us saying Islam marriage is not seen as a sacred covenant, but as a mutual beneficial contract. Any Muslim have a comment? It's a contract of benefit. The women she get paid for sex, and I insist for sex, this is why you can go right now and search Google, you will see if a man he marry a woman and he did not have sex with her, he don't pay her dowry. The dowry is after he opened the gate. So it's a, it's a change of benefit. The man he spend money on you in order to take off your pant for him. The man have a duty to provide money 
the women she have a duty to provide legs and sexual organs and that explain what the Quran says in chapter 4 verse number 34 that because women are uh, because men are in charge and they spend money on them. Read carefully. It's not me who's saying that. This is their Muslim translation, not my translation, because they might say to you, this is not true. Because they spend of their property for the support of the women. So Allah, he made the man excel. And because he spent money on those women, will he have the following right? So what is the following right? So good women is obedient. Guarding in secret which Allah has guarded. As for those who you, who you may fear, you may fear. It's not even, they did not do anything. You fear, you know. I, I fear that this person will not be uh, uh, obeying me. Uh, he did not disobey me yet. I have no proof of it. I fear. So if you fear that your women, she might go rebellion, hmm? and the funny here, they say rebellion because it says, uh, and this is explained in my book, Six and Allah, you will see that when the man he do shoes, it's okay. Nobody will beat him. And this is explained a lie when the Muslim they say to us, and when I talk, by the way, when I say the word Muslim, I mean those liars who try to defend Islam. Otherwise, 99.9 .9 of Muslims, they have no idea what Islam is about. Uh, Muhammadan are so proud, some Muhammadan are proud about numbers, but they forgot that numbers mean nothing because none of you even know to explain anything in the Quran or in your religion. And the Quran itself says nobody can explain the Quran, which is a stupid book. So if somebody do the word, do the act of Nishud, if you ask a Muslim, he says, Nishud, what Nishud? He says, what if your wife, she cheat on you? You liar. In Islam, if a woman, she cheat, you stone her. That's not Nishud. Liar. Oh, what if your wife, she is talking in the phone with somebody? Oh, what? What? It doesn't say here, cheating. Rebellion, like make coffee. She don't make coffee right away. Say, okay, later, you know. This kind of women, according to Islam, the Quran says, admonish them. And I'm reading translation. Banish them to bed the part. And actually, here it says, which means jail them in their rooms. al hajru is to leave. You leave them where? In their rooms. It's not just leave them in their rooms, you jail them in their rooms. And discourage them. And here you will notice the translation of Muslim translation, the word discourage like it appeared, this is the Muhammad Biktal translation, but in different translation, the word disappear totally. It's uh, like uh, some they say beat them lightly. Some, I mean, you can go and check the translation. But the word in Arabic, wadrubuhunna, beat them, scourge them, physically. So you are the maintainer of a creature by any mean. Many Muslim actually, okay, even in YouTube, they say to you, okay, if you have a child, he did something wrong, don't you beat him? So women for them are nothing but the children. Actually, Muhammad, additional to all the garbage he did, he approved having sex with the children. So yes, in Islam, you can abuse it, women again, but when even in early age as a children, as Muhammad himself, he had sex with Aisha, according to Muslim at the age of nine. But he married her at the age of six. What if the woman, she don't want to sleep with her husband for some reason? You can beat her. Is that true? Or I'm lying? Any Muslim? 
Is it true if the wife she don't want to sleep with you, you can beat her? Any Muslim? Nobody. Rebellion can go from anything, from making tea for me and she don't make tea or she's late, and that make her under the condition to beat her, she is disobedient, to the point if things go extreme between you and her and she don't want to sleep with you, then for sure you can beat the hell of her. The Muslim, they will show you hadith saying that women are made from a crocked bone, from what? Let me find you the hadith. I hope people are taking reference so you can see how this filthy cult is very dangerous. And I will tell you later why this is dangerous, you know, because you see, if you look at the women in such a way, which means always you disrespect the women, doesn't matter. You see, I don't mind if you disrespect certain person, but this should be regardless of the woman being a woman or a man. It has nothing to do with the gender. Let me find the hadith. So Muhammad, he explained why you cannot fix a woman. They need to be fixed. They have deficiency. So he come with this following story. That if you try to fix a woman, you break her. She is not fixable. Read carefully, it's not me who's saying this. The Messenger of Allah said, Take my advice with regard of women, to women. Act kind, kindly, reward them. You see, by, by the way, the Muslim translation says, Act kindly. It does not say act kindly. It says, it's also. Be careful with them, not act kindly. Why? For they are, they were recreated from a rib. And he and the most crooked part of the rib is it is uppermost. So if you attempt to straighten it, you will break it. You cannot fix a woman. And here you see how the translation is really crooked translation. Look, here the same hadith. Again, Muhammad is saying, take care with women. What kind of care? Listen carefully. In different hadith, he says, don't beat them until you break them. Don't beat them until you break them. Which means beat them, but with a limit. So women are a crooked rip, according to Muhammad. Let us find you the other hadith. Just to show you how Islam is function, how Muhammad is just a potato. You remember we said to you before that most of Islam is coming from the Prophet Umar ibn al-Khattab, not from Muhammad. Let us see how beating women came to existence. Read carefully. And this is Sahih. They cannot say, uh, you know, don't 
you know, this is uh, weak, this is this is sahih, which means very authentic. The Prophet of Allah, he says, don't beat Allah women, you know, the women. You see here, they say handmaid. And, you know, uh, but when Omar came to the message of Allah and said, women have became Embolodent, sorry, if I say the word wrong, toward their husbands, he, the prophet, gave a permission to beat them. Then many women came round the family of the Messenger of Allah, complaining against their husbands. So the Messenger of Allah said, many women had gone round Muhammad family complaining against their husbands. They are not the best among you. Do you see it? When they say to you in the seventh centuries, women have no right, obviously at that time, men, they are not beating their wives. It was Muhammad who gave a permission. Umar is the one who made the decision, not Allah. And the funny Umar, he says so, suddenly we find a verse in the Quran, as Umar said, chapter 4, verse number 34. Women, they come to complain about beating them. Muhammad, he claimed that those women are the bad one, because a woman should take beating and she never complain. There's a hadith about Umar was beating the slaves because just she covered her head. Women, they used to go in the, the servant of Umar, the slaves, the caliphate. They go in his house and they are wearing no top, topless. So when a woman of them, she covered herself, he said to her, are you going to make yourself equal to the free women? Umar is the man who beat women. Muhammad, he agreed with Umar. Umar is the true founder of Islam, and this is a law made by, by Umar. Actually, Umar, he says, my God, he agreed with me. In some hadiths says a three, some stories say seven, some stories says ten, ten things, ten, seven things, we don't know. But we will show you the, what we can find in English. And you will see many of them have to do with women. The hijab is the decision of Omar. Omar, he walked at night and he was spying at the ass of Muhammad's wife, Sauda. And he said to her, Arifnaki ya Sauda, we, we, we know who you are, Sauda. We know your ass. And then he came to Muhammad. Look how filthy he is. He came to Muhammad, saying to Muhammad, Come on, man. Joe, this is Joe Biden. Uh, let's read the hadith in front of us. Umar, he said, my Lord agreed with me in three things. Mm -hmm. Allah, he agreed with Umar. I mean, well, take a note. The God of Muslims agree with Umar. It's not Umar who agree with Allah. You see, when somebody agree with me, that's mean I am the most important and the second one is an accessory of agreement. I said, O oh Allah Messenger, I wish to, uh, we took the station of Abraham as, as our praying place. So the Kaaba is not the idea of Allah. It's not even the idea of Muhammad. Muhammad was praying to Jerusalem, trying to be a Jew all his life. The Jew rejected him. He's a phony, he's a liar. So Umar, he come with a solution. Let us go back to our roots. We are pagan and we stay pagan. Let us go around the black stone and kiss it. Let us go around the stones and touch them. Let us go around the stones as the pagan Arab used to do, for we are Arab and we are still pagan. So Allah, he took the advice of Umar. And not only that, Umar, he says, 
the verses came as I said. Which means word by word. Literally. Omar, he said, women, they should cover themselves. So Allah, he sent the hijab, order for women to cover themselves, as I said. <laughs> and in the previous hadith, Omar, he said to Muhammad, we should beat women. Muhammad, he made a verse, as I said. As usual. Omar is the founder of Islam, not Muhammad. And Muhammad claimed that those women who complain about beating them are not the best of you, which means those are the bad ones. So in Islam, you cannot, and by the way, who won the hadith, who won the reference? Are you taking reference? Are you taking notes? Many of you don't, because many are coming just for a chat. Right? Uh, we have a person here. His name is Khalid ibn Walid. And he says to us the following. Let us see what he want to say. I like Muslims when they make a comment, you know. Their comment is, I adore, I adore the comment of Muhammadans. So he said, so you are the one who know much about Islam. And look who is talking. He's a person, his name is Khalid ibn walid the guy who killed the man and he cooked him. He cooked him. And he raped his wife. This is your name. Go and read. Go right now to Google, Abdul. Search for Khalid ibn walid cooking a man. Cooking him. And he raped his wife. So are you the one who knows so much about Islam? Yes. Because if you know the name you are holding for yourself, what it does mean, who is he? You will never name yourself with such a name. And not only that, the Quran says that if you have a doubt about your religion, you come to the Christians. This is what happened to the prophet of the Abdul. He was very confused. He did not know if he's a prophet or not. So what Allah said to him, Hey Muhammad, you are an idiot of the village and you do not know yet that you are a prophet. I mean, after all those years giving Quran, now you are suspecting that you are a prophet? Can you believe it? The guy, he is speaking about himself as a prophet, giving Quran all those years, and yet he is not sure. So what Allah said to him in the Quran, which is himself, chapter 10, verse number 94, he says, O Muhammad, if you have a doubt, if you are in doubt about what is revealed into thee, go, go and ask Christian prince. Go and ask the Jews. Go ask us the Christians. Do you see it? Even your Quran commanded you, Muhammad, to come to us concerning what is revealed to you. And here we go, we tell you what is revealed to you is nothing but a lie. It's not a secret that Muhammad is a mentally ill person. How we can prove it very easy. <clears throat> I hope people are taking reference. And let us see. All right. So when we, you know, when we try to understand the Muslims' answers, we find always that Muslims they have no idea what they are talking about.
Muhammad is obviously a mentally ill person. And we have first-hand witnesses. Once the prophet was bewitched so that he began to imagine that he had done a thing which in fact he had not done. You know, you might agree with the bewitching, you might don't agree. You are a Muslim, you are an atheist, you are a Hindu, you are a Buddha, you are a Christian, doesn't matter. What confirmed this story for us, that Muhammad, he had done a thing, but in fact he did not. You can find the reason, but this is a very clear sign of mental illness. Now, if a person, he imagined things happen to him, and first-hand witnesses a Muslim woman, she is called the mother of the believers. If you insult her, the Muslim Sunni, they want to kill you. She is saying that her husband, Mimi, he is mentally ill and he imagined things happening, but in fact, they never happened. And Aisha, she went so far, saying not only he imagined things happened, but in fact, even his sex was a fiction. You read in the Hadith, and let us show you the Hadith. <clears throat> You think Muhammad was confused in chapter 10, verse number 94? Look, uh, what, look what Abbas is saying. Uh, Abbas is a genius, you know, Abbas is a genius. Abbas, he said, you are saying that Muhammad, he here he's confused? Well, read the verse. Guys, does it say, if you have a doubt concerning what is revealed to thee, so I will go with you, said Abbas, just to show you how silly. I mean, I don't know why Allah, he chose the worst of lawyers. This is what Abbas, he said to me, let us laugh together. Abbas is trying to defend. Abbas is in the field. Everybody take a note. <laughs> you know, my Muslim brother is correct. <laughs> you are ignorant of Islam. You think that 1094 means Muhammad was confused? Lul. You idiot. Are you saying that Muhammad is an idiot of the village again? Because if he is not confused, so why he's saying if you are confused? Read carefully, Abdul. This is your Muslim translation. Art in doubt concerning which we revealed into thee. So was he in doubt or not? If he is not, that means the Quran is lying. Do you see the stupidity? It is your Quran saying, if you are in doubt, okay, why, why I want to say to you, if you are in doubt, if you are not? <laughs> Isn't it Allah, he knew the unseen? Is Allah is guessing? You see, I can say, maybe he is, but this is the one is talking is Allah. There's no way he doesn't know. So was Allah guessing wrong? According to Abbas, Allah is an idiot. He do not know what he is talking about. We Muslims who are giving you different interpretation for the story. Yes, Allah is wrong. He is not confused about it. But so why Allah saying if you are This is God is talking supposedly. This is not a guy is guessing. Like, I can say to you, if you are hungry, go eat. Okay, but maybe he's not. But this is God. He knew if you are hungry or not. And why he's asking him to go and ask the Christians? Isn't it the Christians are deceived? I mean, how stupid is to say, go and ask the one who is lost. Uh, guys, do you understand my idea? If the Christians are lost, how you are going to ask the Christians about what revealed to Muhammad? <laughs> uh, 
Uh, here we go again. We have Mr. Khalid. He says to me the following. Khalid ibn al-Walid? He cooked a person? Are you, are you kidding me? Okay, Mr. Khalid, do you, are you willing to call me and I will make you read it live on air, the story? Is that fair, guys? Are you brave enough to call me? And as long as your name is in Arabic, so I'm assuming you have to speak Arabic. And as long as you are answering me in English, that's mean you know English, that's perfect. Are you brave enough to call me right now? And I will make you read life on air. Huh? What do you say? <clears throat> hmm. Did you agree? Right, I'm waiting for you. Do you agree to call me? in front of everybody either i will apologize for i am not able to give you the reference that's mean maybe i'm lying or mostly i'm lying or you read it in front of everybody and you apologize for being the idiot of the village who called himself with the name of a person who did that what do you say Are you there? Well, we are waiting for the challenger. Actually, I can pray for you tons of videos. <laughs> it's all over YouTube. <laughs> Look. If I translate this page into English, what I will find? Let us do this, guys. I will translate into English. Hold on. I will click translate into English. Try not to laugh. Khalid ibn al-Walid beheaded the companion and you know and he cooked it he cooked his head <laughs> and he raped his wife <laughs> it's a videos it's your scholars talking about it are you are you are you crazy do you give me the other do you have the other do you know Borat? Are you sure you are not Borat? <sighs> he was unjust. Ah, he was unjust. Ah, he wasn't unjust to talk about, about adult. <laughs> Anyway, we go back to our topic. <laughs> he cooked the man and then he raped his wife. Praise be to Allah. You see, in the Middle East we say, tell me who is your friend, I'll tell you who you are. This is the friend of Muhammad. Umar spying at the wife of Muhammad ass when she is doing poo poo. Umar beating women because they are not covering their boobs. Umar advising Muhammad to beat women. Khaled is killing a man so he can rape his wife. And the list goes. Bani Umayyah, a bunch of gang, who Muhammad even, he paid them money so they convert to Islam. Tell me who is your friends, I will tell you who you are. Who is the one who killed Uthman? The companion of Muhammad. Who is the one who killed the Caliphate? All of them. 
the companion of Muhammad. Who is the one who killed the grandsons of Muhammad? The companion of Muhammad. Tell me who's your friends, I'll tell you who you are. A bunch of gang, criminals. The cartel of Arabia, the drugs cartel. Now we, co we continue. Maybe we should stop here and we continue tomorrow uh, to continue the topic. We have many things. Beating women, actually, yeah. I want to mention something very funny, Muhammad, he said. Very stupid, actually. The abuse of Muhammad go far beyond abuse word. And here there's an example. You see, not only women she cannot inherit the same, not only we can beat women, not only we can have four of them, not only a woman she cannot complain for beating her, and we show you the reference. Muhammad, he come with a new idea. And I bet you that the one behind it is Omar. <laughs> you remember the Muslim they say to us the word tankah does not mean to F do you remember the verse here proved that they are lying it says here in Arabic that if somebody divorces his wife فَإِن طَلَّقَهَا فَلَا تَحِلُّ لَهُ مِنْ بَعْدْ حَتَّى تَنْكَحَ زَوْجًا غَيْرَهُ and to what tankah what husband but he's a husband. So Tankah is husband. What Tankah mean? Mary, husband? He's husband already. <laughs> so the translation here says, read with me carefully. If he had divorced her for the third time, then she is not lawful unto him, therefore until she had wedded another husband. Is that really what it says, wedded? Well, another husband, he's a husband. What she did to the husband? Let us go and see how Muhammad, he got them busted. And that will take us actually to a different story. Here a story about a woman, she is married. And her husband divorced her three times. Wonderful. Which means already she is married. Okay. The Quran, remember, make a condition that a woman, she cannot go back to her husband until she do what? Until she tankah. Tankah, you know, like it's a, it's a the form of a verb in Arabic. Like you say, yankah is the same as tanka, like you know, to F now, to F, until she do the effing. The Muslim they say that the word nikah means marriage. Let us see if this is true. So now this woman she is married. The Quran says a woman she cannot go back to her husband who divorced her three times until she do what? Tanka. She do nikah. Let us see what the word nikah means. So this woman she is married to a man, his name is Rifa. He did beat her as usual because Muhammad he permitted beating for women as you remember. And the skin is caused by beating Aisha she said. She saw her, her husband, he showed her the green spot in her skin caused by beating. And it was the habit of ladies to support each other. So when the messenger of Allah came, Aisha she said, I have not seen any suffering women as much as a believing women. Look, look. Her skin is greener than her clothes. You remember the light beating, the Muslim they say, beaten lightly. Actually, there's a guy in uh, uh, in England. I, no, I think in Spain. Uh, an, an imam. You know, they want to beat the women who live in the West. But how they can do it? If she called the police, they don't go to jail. How we can do that? So this guy, he come with a genius idea. Let me try to find it for you. Hmm. Spain sentenced an imam for a book 
offering advices on wife beating. How to beat women, and yet if they call, take you to, 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 to call the police, they can approve it. So he advised Muslim men to put a board, like a, a cardboard box, cardboard, you know, under the clothing, when you beat them with your belt. This way they will not leave marks in the skin. And the mark will disappear in, you know, maybe 15 minutes maximum. So you put a cardboard under the pant of your wife, and you make her bend over, and you start whipping her with your belt. Then she called the police for you. By the time the police come, they say, okay, let us see. Let's go to the doctor and see what he did to you. There's no marks. In this way, you did beat the women hard with a lot of pain, and you stay free in jail from jail because there's no proof. Do you believe how evil this cult is? Living in Europe, yet they are making books teaching Muslim men how to beat their wife without going to jail. And here the story in front of us, this is from the time of Muhammad, this problem. Muhammad, he is the one who approved beating women according to the advice of Umar. And we gave you the reference already. Aisha is the first witness that the most suffering women in the, in the world are Muslims, not me. Look, Aisha said, I have not seen any women suffering as much as a believing woman. Who's saying that? Aisha. Is Aisha lying? Obviously she is, because Muslim women, they are so happy. They live in heaven. I mean, what do you want more? You have one rooster, four chickens. He can divorce you by a text message. You can inherit almost nothing from him. And if he divorces you, you get nothing except your dowry. You have no right to complain if he marries second woman. Actually, you can go right now and check in fatwas about, my husband, he did lie to me. And he said to me that he is married only to me. And then I found that he is married to a second husband. So should I, what I should do? The guy, he said to her in the fatwa, he said, you stupid idiot. You cannot complain. This is his right. And he had the right even, you don't even have the right to ask him why he married second woman. You don't even have the right to ask him, are you married to a second woman? Because this is his right. <laughs> oh. Prophet Muhammad, he was the top. Okay, guys, look, look, look at the Muslims. You see, look, I mean, look at the disaster we are showing them from their books. They are showing me a Western man says Muhammad in the top 100 ranking as a gang. Hitler is there too. Don't you know that he put the name of Hitler there too in the book? Do you see how they refute us? I mean, look at this. A guy, his name is uh, uh, by a Jew, Michael Hart. He's a Jew too now. Hey, they add the word Jew there. He's a Jew. <laughs> look at the garbage we are showing them in their book and look at the answer he put Hitler he put Jankiz Khan what's wrong with you <laughs> he was a rapist <laughs> if you ask me actually I have to put if I want to make a book about the top rapist teacher in the world I will name him the Guru Muhammad the guru of rape. So this is your answer for what we are showing you? So the woman here, she is married already. See, the Quran said, a woman, she can't go to her previous husband who divorced her three times until she do what? Do nikah. Remember the word? Nikah. Okay. This woman, she's married. Married to who? Married to a man. His name is Abdul Rahman. And he's beaten her until he made her skin greener than her clothing. As Aisha, she said. So when Abdul Rahman heard that his wife, she came to the Prophet, she, he came after her. He knew she is coming to complain. The woman, the poor woman, she thought Muhammad would support her. Look what Muhammad did. She said, the women, oh, you know, he cannot do uh, boom, boom. He cannot what, do what? Boom, boom. Okay. The man, he said, she's lying. I can do boom boom and stop. 
Muhammad now, he got the point. He's a genius. So when the man, he said, she has a, told a lie, I'm very strong, I can satisfy her, but she is disobedient and want to go back to Rafah. Want to go back where? To the previous husband. The messenger said to her, huh, ha, ha, if your intention, if this is your intention to go back to your previous husband, then you should know it is unlawful for you to marry Rifa unless Abdurrahman F you. Do you see it? This is the word Nikah. This is what the Quran is saying. She cannot go back to the previous husband unless she do what? Unless she do Nikah. Not to marry. This woman now, she is married already. She is married to this guy. But she is not allowing him to have sex with her. So obviously this what this woman she did, she married the man, but she don't want to really to have sex with him. She said to herself, I will marry him for a day or two or three. I will drive him crazy. He tried to sleep with me. I would say, no, I don't want him. Then he divorced me. Then I can't go and marry the previous husband. Muhammad, he explained clearly what the word nikah mean. He said, you cannot, you should know. You cannot go to the previous husband unless you do, boom, boom, you do nikah. Do you see it? So the word nikah mean what? Is it married? She's married. The, the Quran make condition that she cannot go back to the previous husband unless she do nikah. You have to do that, then you can go back. لا تحل له. She is not lawful for him unless she do tankah. Okay. Tankah what? A husband. Okay. So he told us she was going to if who? A man who is a husband, not any man. So the word tankah is to if and the hadith in front of you. Muhammad, thank you very much. You explained very well. So it is not enough to marry a husband to go back to the previous husband but you have to do nikah and the hadith in front of you. And here we look at this abuse again. What kind of a stupid silly cult says that if a husband, he abused her by divorcing her three times, and now this poor woman, she is suffering, trying to go back to her previous husband, obviously maybe for the kids, not because for the man. And now she is trying to go with the tricks of Muhammad. Muhammad, he said, okay, you cannot go back to your previous husband unless you if a new man, a new husband. The woman, she said, okay, let me go and marry a man. But she never thought that she have to if, not only to marry, not only a contract of marriage. Muhammad, he said to her, huh? You think go, he can get, go over my rules, huh? You marry this guy, and you think by marrying him, he divorce you, you go back. No. If he divorce you without doing boom, boom with you, which is nikah, you cannot go back to him. And here you ask the Muslims, here we go, Muslims, tell us, what is the point of this rule? That a woman, her husband divorce her three times, she can't go back to her husband, previous husband. They say to you, the man, the man is abusing the divorce. <laughs> Look at this, a garbage religion. So why you made divorce so easy? If you don't want the man to abuse the right of divorce, if it's a right, hmm? if it's a right. You remember the, the website we showed you? Where a Muslim woman, she said, marriage in Islam is not a covenant, but it's a mutual contract of benefit. Do you remember? It's a contract. The man, he hire you for sex and serving. The man, he fire you because he don't like your service. As simple as that. To the point, Muslim, they can even divorce their wife by text messages these days. And you can go right now, search in Google, divorce by text message. Is it lawful? The answer is yes. The man, he can divorce his wife. Can the wife divorce the husband by text message? No. Actually, in the Middle East, if a woman, she leave her husband's house, he can send the police and arrest her and bring her home like a sheep. They call him the house of obedience law.
the house of obedience. And actually, Muhammad, he went so far. You see here in the translation, they say, uh, until you have sexual intercourse. But it's not only sexual intercourse. She have to taste his juice. And look how the translation changed, depend on the translator. Until he tastes your sweetness and you taste his sweetness. What does that mean? What sweetness we are talking about? A woman, she is tasting a man's sweetness and the man is tasting the woman's sweetness? Hmm. Sound fishy. In the other translation, it says, until you have intercourse. Okay. Here it says, until you taste his sweetness. Okay. What is the connection? The connection is very simple. The word asila is orgasm. Is what? Orgasm. So Muhammad is saying, not until you taste his sweetness, he is saying, until you taste his orgasm. Any comment? <clears throat> no comment? Again, the woman, she is abused. She is the one who been abused by the husband. They play with women, they divorce them, they marry them, they divorce them, they marry them as much as they wish. Muhammad make divorce so easy. And then Muhammad supposedly now trying to fix it by abusing the women again. So now this poor woman, she's trying to go free. She wanna be free from this marriage. Who obviously, and the story is clear in front of us. She did marry this man, but she don't want to do nikah to this man, which means she don't want to have sex. Muhammad, he put additional condition on her. You have to if him. You cannot go back to Rifa. And this poor woman, she is struggling to go back to her previous husband Clearly not because she love him, but obviously she have children. And this is another issue in Islam. The man will keep the children. And the woman, she will become a hostage. When a girl, she leave the age, she is at the age of nine. She have to leave the mother. When the girl, she leave the age, the, the boy, she, he is in the age of six, he have to go with the father. And before that age, the mother, she can keep them only in conditions like she is not married yet. Now, for sure, there's many Islamic sect, each one of them, he have its own rules and those things. And as usual, the Muslims disagree about to agree. They never agree about anything. Do we have any Muslim want to say anything? Not to forget, I mean, there's tons of things we can talk about. As an example, Muhammad, he made women equal to dogs and donkeys Muhammad he forbid the Muslim women to ask for a divorce unless there is some strong reason but we just showed you Muhammad he ordered them to beat the women 
So what strong reason can be more than this? <laughs> Correct? Didn't we show you that Muhammad, he said, the worst women between you is the women who complain about beating? Did we show you or not? Where is the hadith? Hold on. Let us go back to the hadith. <clears throat> so what is more important reason to ask for divorce more than beating? If beating is lawful in Islam, like what? What is the reason then? And when the women, they complain about beating Muhammad, he says they are not the best among you. Which means a good Muslim woman, she should take beating her by her husband as a blessing. In one hadith, Muhammad, he said, if a woman, she lick the puzz of her husband, she did not do enough to him. So when a woman, she can ask for divorce. If he is not feeding her, not paying for food and, you know, shelter, yeah, that is a reason. Beating you? No, it's okay. Jailing you in your room? And he's right. Not allowing you to talk to anyone? It is his right. It's like, you know, somebody call the animal department and says there is somebody abusing his dog and beating him. So in America, or in the West, if you beat a dog, you go to jail. In Islam, if a woman, she call the police, saying that my husband is beating me, Muhammad, he gave an opinion about this woman. She is not the best woman between you. And then they will say to me, you are lying, where it says that it's in front of you. And this is sahih, what we will do. You want to say to me the game of weak and strong and vitamin and hmm? while in America you can call up the police for somebody beating a cat a cat if you beat a cat you go to jail if you harm a dog you go to jail Conclusion, dogs and cats in the West have way, way, way better treatment from Allah treating the women. And I don't want to forget to mention that Muhammad made it clear that women are equal to dogs and donkeys. Muhammad, he said, three things defiled the Muslim prayer which means his prayer is not accepted. A dog, a donkey, a woman. If they walk just in front of you, do you see it? The prayer is severed by a black dog, and here you see the racism of Muhammad, black dog again. A woman who reached the age of menstruation. And when they asked the wise Muhammad, why the black dog is listed there? What's the difference between the white dog and the yellow dog and the red dog? The prophet, he says, oh, the yellow, do the, the, the black dog is the devil. The black dog is the devil. You know, here there's somebody saying, have you ever seen that the hadith says, if you harm a cat or a dog, you go to hell? I mean, this is funny. So we can harm a woman and we don't go to hell. But if we harm a dog, we go to hell. And you know how this hadith will function when Muhammad, he says, kill all dogs. 
You see the stupidity of Islam? How they say to us that the Prophet says, if you harm, like there's a woman, she gave water to a dog, I think, or a cat. And because she did that, she will go to heaven. Okay. Muhammad, he says, kill the dogs. <laughs> Where is the merciful Prophet? So Muhammad want to give them water before he killed them? I heard the message of Allah saying, commanding the killing of dogs, and the killing started. <laughs> and then people, they complained, they said, we have guardian dogs, we need them. <laughs> so look at the stupidity of this cult and the lies they gave to us. Muhammad brother, he says, a woman, she gave water to a cat or a dog, she go to heaven. But he ordered to kill them. So, am I going to go to heaven if I give you water before I kill you? Or after? And what kind of a prophet he want to kill dogs? What is the problem? You see, he is not ordering to kill dogs who have disease. No, all dogs. And then when people, they complain. He limit the dogs to be like the what kind of dogs to. And then because he's racist, he insists to kill every black one for sure. Hmm. Yeah, vice versa, vice versa. You are right, vice versa. <laughs> Muhammad, he said, and this is after the people object him for his decision. And he, he said to himself, oh, oh, people will hate me now and nobody will listen to me because the, those are better when they need dogs. We cannot live without them. The message of Allah said, if we, it, it were not the dogs, we are part of a nation among the nations when I would order to, the, to that all of them to be killed. Do you see it? Muhammad, he hate dogs. He would love to kill every single dog in this earth. Actually, Muhammad, he made it clear that if you have a dog in your house, <clears throat> Allah will take from your deeds every day. Like you have a bank account with Allah. For every day you host a dog, he is not for necessity, like a dog of guarding or etc. Allah will take from your deeds every day. Actually, Muhammad he made it more clear that. Angels will not enter a house, have a dog. And for sure, this is a different topic. We can talk about it maybe next time. And that is showing us how stupid this religion, that you have an angel who has 600 wings, yet he is afraid from a puppy. He have a phobia. The angel of Allah, they have a phobia of puppies. Oh, oh, oh. I mean, think about it. You know, you are an angel who have 600 wings. Hmm? And according to Muhammad, when he saw him, Jibreel, he covered the horizon. This is how big he is. Okay. But this angel who covered the horizon, when he see a puppy, he do pee pee. I mean, think about it. Put yourself in the shoes of Jibreel. You are an angel, and you see this scary dog in front of you. What you would do? You will enter the house? No way. It's dangerous. Angels will never enter a house. Have dogs. And if you ask me, that's very strong. And that's as deep. But you know, this is a different topic. We can make special time for it. 
about the phobia of Muhammad. Obviously, Muhammad, he have a lot of phobia. But in the same time, if you think deeply about what Muhammad, he say, you will notice that Muhammad is always right. And look at those dogs. I just heard me saying that the Prophet said that angels will not enter a house, have dogs. And look, look at the look in their face. They were amazed of the Prophet wisdom. Actually, I think they were like, what? Like, oh, oh, what? Do you have a dog at home? Angels are not coming to your house. The funny, there's a story that Muhammad, he found a dog under his bed and he was dead for a few days. And more funny is, how a dead dog enter your bed and you did not even smell him? And the more funny is, Muhammad is saying that the reason Jibreel told him, the reason he did not enter the house because there's a dog under your bed. The message of Allah stopped because of a dead dog. Dog. Puppy. All Islam stopped. What if there is a dog is buried under the bed of Muhammad? Muhammad will never receive Quran forever. What do you think? I will leave you with this. I have we have enough for today. I want to say thank you all for being here. The previous video is going to be deleted as soon as I finish from here. This video will stay here maybe until tomorrow. As you know, I don't keep my videos. Please download them, share them with your friends. And again, for those who speak Indonesian language, we have the book, my book for you for free. Uh, Sex and Allah. Very number one in Indonesian language. And the reason we give those in free, not the English one, because those are poor countries and we love them and we support them. Those who cannot afford, we will give them things for free. But doesn't mean we are rich, and not because I'm rich, but because we support them, and because they cannot afford it. So instead of making you know, money, we prefer to save millions and millions of Muslims in Indonesia, and whoever speak that language. So the link is already ex exist in uh, battery on and i think the admins are posting links for you feel free to download it share it with your friends and enter we see you soon again fight against islam so you can save the women islam is a sexual cult made by the man for the benefit of the man even heaven is heaven of men even reward is reward of men one of the stories Muhammad, he says that women in heaven, she will be 70 times more pretty, which is very stupid. Because if every woman she go to heaven, she became 70 times more pretty, that's mean nothing changed. You were ugly in earth, you are ugly in heaven. Because remember, beauty is about relative. To who? So if three women, they go to heaven, and one, she is not good looking. The second woman, she is medium. The third one, she is so beautiful. Then the three of them, they will get 70 times more pretty. That's mean... Number one, she became 70 times pretty. The second one is 140 times pretty. Number three is 210 times beauty. So what the change happened? Nothing. You were ugly in earth and you are ugly in heaven. Excuse my word. Muhammad is just fooling you. He knew that women, they like to be pretty. So nothing changed. This is how stupid this cult is. In the same time, Muhammad, he promised them women to abuse them in heaven. The man, he is the hero there. He is the rooster. And the palace is full of women who they are fighting over him. The man. This is a religion center. The man, because Muhammad, he need men to kill. He will not win. He will not subdue. He will not conquer by women. He need men. So he created a religion fit with the sexual desire of the man. And to make the women subdued under his feet thank you very much for being here we love the muslims but for sure we don't love islam islam is a disgusting cult and we pray that muslim women will be free from this cult 
and then we will have a free generation from subjugating the women sexually under the feet of the man. Muhammad, he actually, I did not mention many things. Muhammad, as an example, he said, if a man, he went to bed and his wife, she did not satisfy him in the bed, the angels will be cursing her all day, all night until the morning. Because this is your duty. You are just a sex toy. This is what you are made for, according to Muhammad. You have a duty. Muhammad, he considered the women an evil person. To the point if a person, a woman, she asked her husband for a divorce for not a good reason. And we showed you Muhammad, he allowed beating women. So even if he beat you, this is not a good reason. If she asked for a divorce, from her husband for not a good reason and we showed you that beating is not a good reason because he have the right to beat you so what is the reason to ask for divorce not feeding me if you ask for a divorce you will not ever go to heaven Muhammad he made it clear that beating women is a must because women are crooked and Muhammad, he made it clear that women, they are the devil himself. To the point he says that a woman, she come in the image of the devil and she leave in the image of the devil. How that can be accepted by any human being? Women is your mother, is your sister, is your daughter. Do you really think that your mother she come in the image of the devil and she live in the image of the devil? Is that how you pay her back for all the time she spent on you? Is that how you pay her back for giving birth to you? Is that how you pay her back for crying over your bed when you are sick? Do you have the courage to say to your mother that women, they advance and retire in the shape of the devil? Do you have the courage to make a print of this hadith and put it in the top of the bed of your mother? That, hey mother, you are the devil himself, the prophet said. If you are a proud Muslim, do it. Let us see how proud you are. So don't lie to people speaking about women right in Islam. Women, they are the devil in Islam. Actually, even Muhammad, which is very funny. Muslim, they say to you, huh, original sin, Huh. The Bible says that you know Eve she deceived uh, Adam. What well, do you know what the story there about Adam and Eve proving that women are smart, not the opposite? And the Adam was a stupid because Muhammad saying that women are, are are stupid, right? So if the if really if the women is the one who deceived Adam, but the fact both of them they are deceived, not only Adam, but according to Muhammad. Adam is a victim of Eve. But how Adam was deceived by the stupid Eve, if Muhammad keeps saying women are stupid. Muhammad, he claimed that if not Eve, no women betray her husband, which means Eve and all women are the same. They are betrayal. They are bad. They are ugly. They are cheaters. And the funny is, they say original sin is a stupid. By the way, original sin is not this. We don't believe in original sin the way they are talking about it here. Original sin is that Adam is the first man who commits sin and we follow. That is original sin, which means every one of us is a sinner too. We are not going to go to hell or to heaven because of Adam's sin. I will go where I go because of my sin. Original sin is not, I am going to go to hell because of Adam's sin. I will go where I go because of my sin. But original sin is, this is how sin started. And since Adam until now, there's not a single person is not a sinner. The only one is not a sinner is Jesus as God who came in the flesh. This is why the Bible says that every man, 
Every man is a sinner. Short of the glory. But Muhammad, he made the women are the reason for every evil. And not to mention here, to forget to mention how much he hated the Jews, claiming that the Jews is a reason for the food to be decay, the phobia of the Jews. So Muhammad, he have two phobia. We can actually say three as summary for today. We mentioned dogs phobia, women phobia, and now at the end, Jewish phobia. But the phobia of Muhammad goes beyond phobia. Muhammad, he want to use the women so he can conquer. And this is why in one of the hadith Muhammad, he says, attack the Romans so you can get the blonde girls. He did not say attack the Romans so we can convert them to Islam. He said, attack them so we can get the blonde girls. Right? Uh, uh, let us show you what Khad is saying as an end. He says that my God, he punished Eve. But you see how silly you are, Khalid. Pause the, the verse, you will see that God, he punished Adam. He says to him, this is what will happen to you. And he punished Eve and he said, this is what will happen to you. So you are a fake person. He did not blame Adam alone. He did not blame Eve alone. You're a prophet, he did. You see how silly you are? Adam punished too. Go down, you will suffer. You will do this and this is and this and this and this will happen to you. Shame on you to be a liar. But you are following Muhammad. So what I am not surprised about. While you're Muhammad saying clearly that woman, she is the devil. She come in the image of the devil. She retreat in the image of the devil. And if there's no Eve, no sin, Muhammad said. If there's no Eve, there is no sin. Do you see it? So don't miss and misquote the Bible, you liar. The women, she will suffer by giving birth, but Adam, she will suffer to, to provide to the women, to feed the women, to feed the children. Enmity will be between him and the devil forever. It was a punishment for both. You are not being honest, you are being a liar. Because you're saying the Bible blame Eve, punish Eve, when the Bible punished both of them. And as you see, this is your prophet. This is not my opinion. This is not interpretation. You're a prophet saying, if not Eve, no woman betray her husband, which mean every Eve by nature is a bad person, according to Muhammad. And Muhammad taking all the bad coming from Eve. So Eve today is the daughter of the Eve yesterday, and she is bad as the mother. That's what your prophet is saying. Thank you very much for being here. I hope we had, there's many stories we can tell, more evil, but I think this is enough. And until we see you soon again, may the Lord bless you all. Love the Muslims, but don't love the cult of Muhammad. It's evil. It's disgusting. Never love and adore someone and say to you that women come to you in the image of a devil and they live in the image of the devil. My friend, that is evil. That is the devil statement himself. Don't believe in a man. He says to you that beating women is a right given to you. What if you are born as a woman? What do you think about it? And then there's a guy, just because he have a little piece between his legs, he can beat you. How fair is that? What kind of a prophet he legalized beating women and abusing them? And then the Muslim, they say to us, oh, beat them lightly, lightly to the point you don't break their bones. And those who complain about beating, they are the worst of you. So a good Muslim woman, she like it. She should accept it. She cannot complain. Why in America, a dog, if you beat him, he have rights to be protected. A woman in Islam, she have none. Dogs, they got their right 
before women in Islam get their right. Thank you. And I hope that today we have a, a lot of reference. At the end of the day, we have to admit that Muslim women, as we see in the screen, they enjoy being Muslims. And Muslim men, they've been taught to be merciful, beautiful. They treat women very nice. And you can tell that women in Islam, she is protected like pearls and jewelries. Not to mention that the hijab Omar he made, as of the women, she is a, a chicken we have to hide from the fox. As if she is a, a she is a goat. Actually, I don't want to forget to mention that even the Quran, yes, the Quran says that women are goat. Yes, my friend, women are goat. He used the word Naja. Naja. Can you believe it? Chapter 38, verse number 23 and 24. My brother, he have 99 goat. He have 99 goat talking about wives. Ninety-nine goat. Well, you are then a son of a goat. If you accept your mother to be called a goat, then, like you know, when you read this, you think he's talking about a goat, right? I mean, when you read the story here, you think he's talking about literally about a goat. But no, it's not about a goat. It's about women. When you see the word here, you say, okay, this is about goats. What the problem? This is about women. Isn't it amazing how the skull function? Those are women? My brother, he have 99 goats and this is represent women while I have a single goat. He could not find a better word for women except a goat. What more to say? It's English. It's endless and disgusting. The man who accepts a woman to be his goat, well, obviously he's an animal too. For he think like one. Thank you very much. May the Lord bless you. Christ is Lord. Islam is false. Love the Muslims. Fight the cult. This is my message. Thank you. God bless. Take care.